I'm Jill. I run a one person fashion reselling business uh, where I basically acquire clothing on the cheap through thrift stores, consignment stores, buy sell trade stores, thread up, uh, friends, family, neighbors, state sales, my own closet. And I flip it for a profit online on platforms such as Poshmark and Mercari. Business. But also sustainability, textile waste prevention, keeping those landfills a little less full, and all the while being able to safely work from home for myself. Uh, so 2020 was my first year of reselling and it wasn't an ideal place to start. But luckily I was able to make quite a few good sales over the year that I am so grateful for, which I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So the platforms that I mainly sold on were Poshmark and Mercari with a few sales from eBay sprinkled in the mix and um, a few more from ThreadUp to top it off. So 100 over 100. I'm gonna reflect and analyze on each of these sales and decide whether or not I would buy again or pass. You might be thinking, it was a three-figure sale. Yes, of course you buy again. Okay, yes, great point. But fashion and the resale world moves fast. Demand and desirability mixed with excess supply can really affect a brand's resale value. For example, the size five Rothy's that have been sitting in my closet for $80 that I paid $65 for on ThreadUp um, those have been sitting in my closet for almost a year now. So let's start off with uh, the Poshmark sales. So let's take you back. New Year's Day, 2020. How simple life was back then. New Year's Day, 2020 started off with a bang as I made my biggest sale to date at that point in time. It was this beautiful pair of um, ATP Atelier All Tomorrow's Parties um, leather slides that were beautiful and <laughs> I remember I probably had these listed for two months and like I, I mean I was just starting reselling then and I was just so shocked that they weren't selling immediately and I thought that waiting two months was just the longest time for these to sell I remember being so so impatient back then but um, with these higher price items and with smaller designers and brands this is definitely a case of waiting for the right buyer. Um, this was an outright buy of $155 and I would buy again. I really, really like this brand. I tried to cultivate a modern minimalist um, independent designer closet on Poshmark. I mean, I, I sell everything obviously because I wouldn't be able to make a living income um, just selling curated Garmin Toy brand stuff. but. Um, I really, really love this style. I really love this brand, and I think that it would sell again for over $100. So, yes, I would pick it up again. So up next are these Tory Burch embroidered straw loafer flats. Um, these sold for $120. They were, I remember picking these up at Goodwill and paying up for them at Goodwill. Gosh, my pictures were so beautiful back then. I just really... It's so fun seeing these pictures from a year ago and how much your style changes over time. Um, I would buy again. I think that these are very cute, a really cute summer style. Yes, I would buy again. Up next is this For Love and Lemons Willow Bell Sleeve Dress. Um, this, I don't know if I would pick up For Love and Lemons again unless it was new with tags and a newer style. I think... I think the resale value for, for Love and Lemons has definitely gone down. Yes, I would pick this up again, but I remember paying up for this. Gosh, these, where are all these plant nuts coming from? Where are all these plant nuts coming from? <sighs> I would buy this again um, at a thrift store price. I would not pay up for it again because I remember paying up for this at a consignment store. Um, this next sale I was really excited for because it was an outright buy and my general goal in reselling at, at this time when I was just starting out was just hoping to make like five to ten dollars per item which looking back on I mean that, that's great if you put in the time but I just I've really changed my focus this year on investing in 
high priced sales um, just so I can do less work. So anyways, this was a very exciting sale. This was a new with tags Bowden wool tweed British blazer and this was an outright buy of $115 and this was definitely a turning point when I thought, okay, I need to start looking for hire. <laughs> I need to start doing a lot of research on what sells for more than $50 to $70 and I need to start sourcing those items. So yeah, this was a big turning point for me. Um, I would stick to jackets and blazers by Bowdoin, but I don't think that the resale value is that great anymore on that particular brand. So I guess it just depends on the style and the condition of the item and the price. <laughs> oh, this was a good one. I remember finding this brand for the first time and thinking that it was Steve Madden, but it was actually a pair of shoes by Freebird by Steven. Um, and this was a really popular style. This is the wrapped stair leather booty. Um, I found these at my local thrift store and I sold them pretty quickly. They sold for, for 120, which was great. And yes, I would buy again. So this was a really, I remember this being a really exciting find. This was my first time finding Veronica Beard at uh, Goodwill. And this sold so quickly. This was the Veronica Beard striped emery dress. Yes, I would buy Veronica Beard like, over and over again. I love that brand. It sells so high and it sells quickly too. So yes, yes I would. Up next is this pair of Hunter boots. Um, these sold for $115. I, I don't know, I feel like at the beginning of this year, um, Hunter was still pretty high valued um, in, the resale, in the resale community, but I think that with their collaboration with Costco and you can find them at, like at every Nordstrom rack, I think that the resale value has really gone down. Um, so unless you find them for like five to $10 at the thrift store, I probably wouldn't pick them up again. I think the general resale value of Hunter Boots now is probably 50 to 75. So oof. this is when my love affair with Saison started. This is my first Saison sale. This was the linen ivory Benny jumpsuit. This sold for $130. Um, and I was hooked. I thought, wow, I should probably go find more of these pieces. Uh, yes. I would buy again. I remember finding this in a buy sell trade store and being really, really excited about it because it was a brand that a lot of resellers were talking about. So 100%, 1000 times yes, I would, I would pick this up again. Oof. And this was when I discovered Gal Meets Glam was around the same time as well, which is also one of my staple brands to sell. Um, this was a new with tags maxi dress that sold for $135 and I was hooked after that as well. Gal Meets Glam became uh, an, a staple in my bolo list and I love sourcing it. I love selling it. Unfortunately, Julia did end the line so there will be no more pieces coming out um, at this point in time but there's still a lot of really great coveted fan favorite pieces that are out there that you can make a lot on. Um, so depending on the piece and depending on the price, I would definitely pick up again. Ooh, this was a nice piece. This was a, a this was a newer DKNY runway, really beautiful silk sheath, long sleeve black shirt dress that was so, so beautiful perfect contemporary modern minimalist dress um, and this sold for $116. I couldn't find a stock photo for it which um, which this year I've definitely shifted just to using stock photos. I just think that they look better than my photos so I use them but I feel like if I had a stock photo of this I probably could have sold it for more but um, I was happy with selling it for 116. I would definitely pick up DKNY, but only if it is the runway, um, only if it is the runway line and only if it's recent or really, really cool vintage. 
This was my second big Saison sale. This was the Casey Loose Knit Abstract Sweater, sold for $144. Would definitely, definitely pick it up again. This was such a beautiful, a beautiful piece. I hope Saison doesn't go down in value. I love it so much. Okay, this is a Patagonia puffer uh, nano down vest. Uh, this sold for $100. I would recommend picking up and paying up for down pieces by Patagonia and puffer jackets. I wouldn't recommend paying up for the cinchilla fleece anymore. I remember paying up for a bunch of those at buy sell trade stores and sourcing through other Poshmark closets. But I think that the resale value on those have gone down. You used to be able to make like 80, 75 to 80 dollars or so for one of those the snap tee fleeces, but the value has definitely gone down to like. 40 or 50 it just become a little bit oversaturated and the desirability for it has gone down but uh the puffer jackets and vests i think still hold quite a bit of resale value so i would definitely pay up and pick those pieces up oh so this was cool this was uh my biggest this was my biggest bundle sale to date i don't get a lot of bundle sales because my um average price point is pretty high so it's like it's buyers who are coming in looking for a very specific piece so I don't get too many bundle sales but this was an outright bundle sale it was so cool I remember there were about four items in there and then there were two items that were over a hundred each one of them was this Ghani new with tags dress that sold for 150 I wouldn't pick up this style because this style is pretty oversaturated so I wouldn't pay more than like 10 to 15 dollars for it so yes to new Ghani pieces, no to old Ghani pieces. And it also totally depends on the piece, um, how much I would pay up for. Would I buy this one again? I think I bought, I think I got it at Nordstrom Rack for like $30, probably not. Uh, this was my first Farm Rio sale. So, so this was right when Farm Rio was kind of coming out on the scene and everybody was getting really excited about the brand. This was a fuzzy yellow toucan sweater and that sold for $115 in the same outright buy bundle. Um, this I would pick up again. I think it's a really, I think it's a really cute, desirable piece by Farm Rio. I know that they have a few oversaturated styles that you're gonna wanna check on, but I would definitely pay up for this piece again. Um, up next are these leather riding boots from a brand called Coquelico. This brand is sold at Anthropology. These sold for $100. Would I pay up for this? I don't know if I would pay up for this brand. Mm. I probably wouldn't pay up for this brand unless it was new or a really uh, nice style. I think the general selling price of these shoes is probably like 75 to 100 or so. So I wouldn't pick them up at a consignment, but I would probably pick them up at a thrift store for less. Get out of here. Forget it. Oh, his plant nuts go, go land on a plant somewhere. Don't bother me. Um, so this was another outright buy. I remember this is the collaboration between Rodarte and Universal Standard. Um, this is the, a ruched red dress that is here seen on the actress from Jennifer. What's the show? What's her name? that actress's name? Jennifer Jones? What's that show called? Jennifer Jones? Chris, Kristen Jones? Kristen Stewart? Kristen Bell? No. What's her name? Kristen Je Jennifer Jones? Netflix? Jessica Jones? Jessica Jones. Kristen Ritter, here shown on actress Kristen Ritter which definitely helps. If you have a picture of a celebrity wearing your item that you were going to sell, definitely use that either in the cover photo or in some of the photos. People love celebrity endorsed pieces. Wow, it looks like I've... <laughs> it looks like I have a, um, a lion's mane. <laughs> yes, I would pick this up again and I would pay up for it. This is another Saison piece. This is a um, this is a crochet eyelet flutter dress, and this sold for one hundred dollars. 
I would pick it up again, but I think that some Cezanne pieces are becoming oversaturated or less desirable, so I probably wouldn't pay more than like 30 or so for this. Um, okay, ooh, here we go. An Everlane sale over 100, I'm shocked. Um, this is a pair of pebbled leather slides by Everlane, and I'm actually really surprised that these sold for $100 because Everlane's value is just Depending, well, okay, I shouldn't say that, but generally Everlane's um, average sales price has been going down. I probably would not pick these up again. I remember getting these at a buy, sell, trade store. I would get them at the thrift store, but I would not pay up for them again. I actually have two pairs of Everlane loafers that have been sitting all year that just won't sell for more than $70, so I will not pay up for them again. Everlane has been... Um, the demand for it has gone down and they are sending in a lot of pieces to Nordstrom Rack. So it's just not a super desired brand anymore that I've noticed, at least for reselling. I could be wrong, but that's just my, that's just my opinion. Next, yes. Dr. Martin's vintage 1940 14 eye tall combat boots sold for $140. I remember picking these up at Goodwill and they were in the fashion focus section for $30. And I remember saying, okay, this is a lot for Goodwill, but I'm gonna pick them up. These are something special. And they were something special. They sold for $140. Yes, I would pick them up again. Um, I think that Dr. Martens also has a lot of overstock going to Nordstrom Rack, so I would just say be, be diligent about checking comps when you buy them or when you're about, when, when you would pay up for Dr. Martens so that you know what you can expect to get because there is an oversaturation in certain styles. Up next is another Galmeets Glam piece. This is a really beautiful midi dress that uh, was a fan favorite. So this sold pretty quickly. This sold for $145. Yes, I would buy it again. So this is the only time that I've sold this brand of shoes. This is Scotch and Soda and these are the green olivine biker boots. These sold for $148. I remember paying up for them at Crossroads Trading. Um, but yeah, I think that this is a really cool style. I would definitely buy them again. I think I paid like $50 to $60 for these. I don't know if I would spend that. I don't know if I would take that chance on these again, but um, yeah, I would get them again. Ooh, definite bolo brand. Um, these are a pair of Sophia leather um, leather glove block heels by Paloma Wool. It's one of my favorite brands to sell right now. Uh, these sold for $130, and yes, I would absolutely pick them up again. I would pay up for them. I pay up for it now. I love Paloma Wool. It is one of the hottest upcoming independent brands and designers, and they are so popular pick them up, pay up for them. They're great. This is a navy linen blend sleeveless jumpsuit by the brand APC. These sold for $113. I found these at the thrift store, so I did not pay up for them. Um, I would definitely get them again because I think that they're a really cute style and they're kind of this contemporary modern aesthetic that I'm going for in my closet. So yes, I would pick it up again. Um, and I would have even paid up for this. This is uh, an Ula Johnson Elliott navy lace-up knit sweater. This sold for $120. I wouldn't pick it up again. I paid up for this in the thrift store and um, Ula Johnson was really, really, really popular at the beginning of last year, but I think that, that the demand for it has definitely lessened a little bit. So I would just be particular about uh, the pieces that you are going to pay up for, but if you find it in the thrift store, pick it up. This uh, this is a Universal Standard black wool pea coat. This sold for $200 outright, and um, I love selling Universal Standard. It's great. I would definitely pick this up again, and in fact, I did pick it up again. I found the same coat at Crossroads a few weeks ago, so I picked it up and it's currently listed and I'm hoping to sell it for the same price. This is another piece by Cezanne. This is the Anesso plaid linen midi dress. 
This sold for $174, which is great. And uh, yeah, I would pick it up again for sure. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is an M.M. Lafleur the Sarah 6.0 dress in ivy green. This sold outright for $120 and I don't know if I would pick it up again. I think M.M. Lafleur is becoming a little bit more and more saturated. I picked this up at Crossroads. Um, I would probably pick up this style again because it's one of their more staple well-known pieces but if I was paying up in a consignment store for M.M. Lafleur I would definitely look up the style and make sure that it is a desired piece with good comps. Um, I know that they have a collaboration with ThreadUp and so ThreadUp is getting a bunch of pieces so that's getting kind of oversaturated there so just just look at comps before. This is a piece by Reformation. This is the L Smocked Polka Dot Mini Dress. Get out of here. Get out of here. Stop. Personal space. I don't know where all of these plant gnats are coming from. This is the Reformation L Smocked Polka Dot Mini Dress. And this sold for $100. I paid up for this on ThreadUp, I remember. This is when Reformation was still huge. Um, brand value has definitely gone down for them. There was some controversy with the brand earlier last year and the brand value has really gone down. I know that they sell a lot to Nordstrom Rack as well. It's becoming a diluted brand. I wouldn't pick this up again unless it was in, no, I wouldn't pick this up again. Pass. This is a pair of shoes by the brand Bed Stew. Uh, these are the Nandi Distress Chelsea boots. These I sold for $162. I remember paying up for them on ThreadUp and I would definitely pay up for them again. I think Bed Stew is a really great brand with fans uh, that are willing to pay up for it. So yeah, I'd buy it again. These are a pair of Free People's collaboration with Feral Robin. These are the vegan cowhide. Uh, hiking boots these sold for a hundred dollars and I found I think I got these half off at Crossroads so I would definitely pick these up again I wouldn't pay more than like 20 or 25 for them but yeah I'd pick them up again uh, these are a pair of Tory Burch Riva splattered ballerina flats I remember paying up for these on ThreadUp keep in mind the only way to source for about three or four months earlier last year was online with um, all the shutdowns so I was very desperate and I paid up for a lot of items that I shouldn't have um, but this I think I paid like 40 or 50 for these which is dumb they sold for $105 and um, I would pick them up again but I wouldn't pay more than 20 for them these next shoes are from Cezanne. These are the Mikel Camel Leather Loafers. These sold for $115 and um, yeah, I would definitely pick them up again for sure. And I think I paid about like 30, I think I paid $30 for them and I would still pay that price for these. That was a great sale and still a super in demand popular brand. This is a Patagonia blue insulated thermal jacket. This one sat for a while because I couldn't find a cover photo for it. Um, I wouldn't pay up for this again, but if I found it in the thrift, I would pick it up definitely. Uh, these are a pair of Sears and Morrison snakeskin booties. These sold for $100. I picked these up at Crossroads. Um, I didn't think that these were going to do well after I picked them up. I didn't look at the comps. I just picked them up because they were half off. Um, the brand is kind of all over the place in terms of comps on Poshmark. So I'm really surprised that these sold for as high as they did. But if I found them in the thrift, I would definitely pick them up again. These are a pair of Dr. Martin's Leona platform leather hiking boots. These sold for $140. I picked these up at Crossroads. I think that, again, Dr. Martin's is becoming saturated with overstock going to Nordstrom Rack and, and such. So I would just be diligent in looking at comps for whatever style you find. These I paid up for, I believe I paid $60 for them. I wouldn't pay that for these again. 
um, but I was really happy to sell them for 140. So up next is this Veronica Beard Sean Floral Silk Rouge Dress. These were, this was new with tags and it sold for $150. This I paid up for in a buy sell trade store and I didn't look at comps because this was one of my second, uh, this was probably my second time finding Veronica Beard. So I was so excited and blinded by the, blinded by the um, joy of finding a coveted brand that I didn't, do my research. <laughs> this was all the beginning of the year. I've I've learned. This sold for 150. This was a more saturated style, but it was a size 16, which is a good size. Plus, sells really really well on Poshmark. So luckily, this sold pretty quickly. Um, I would pick it up again in a plus size. I wouldn't in standard sizing. Um, this is a new attack saison floral peasant dress. This sold for a hundred dollars. I paid up for this on ThreadUp. I was paying way too much because my profit margins were so slim. I would pick this up. I wouldn't I wouldn't pay more than 30 to 35 dollars for this though. But yeah, Saison always. I'd always pick I'll always pick it up. I love it so much. Uh, these next pair of shoes are by Ni Solo. This is the Sophia Slip-on Heeled Mule, and these sold for $120. Um, these I paid up for on thread up and I would pay up for them again. I think that New Solo still holds its brand value really well. They create such classic, simple, uh, modern, contemporary, minimal style shoes that are gonna be in style for a long time. So there is still a demand for them and they're a smaller company, so they're not oversaturating any kind of market. So I would definitely pay up for these again and definitely recommend picking up new solo. Um, oh, this is another great brand. This is a Hackwith Design House new with tags Marnie Kimono dress in a size 16. So one, plus size, excellent. Two, a great independent, minimalist, small designer. So um, yes, I would pick this up again. I paid up for this, but I'm glad that I did. I would still pay up for this. Love this brand and um, Highly recommend it. This sold for $140. This is an Ula Johnson Hollis Puff Sleeve Romper. This I picked up from Nordstrom Rack during their big summer sale. This sold pretty quickly, like within a couple of days of listing for $195. Um, I would definitely pay up for this again. This is a new with tags dress by the collaboration between Joanna Ortiz and H&M. Uh, this sold for $135. I would definitely pick up this style again. I still have quite a few dresses that I picked up that haven't sold yet. It could just be my prices. Um, it could just be seasonality, but I would definitely pick up this style again, but I would do more research into what were the more popular styles from that collaboration and just focus on those because I still have quite a few pieces that haven't sold yet. Yep, I pick it up again. I loved this sale. Uh, this is a, a really cool brand called Ackler. Another minimalist, modern garment toy brand. This was the new with tags, um, tool filled, off the shoulder, puff sleeve crop top that was so beautiful. And this sold for $175. And I would absolutely buy this again. I love this designer and brand and I would definitely pay up for it again. So this was a slow burn of a sale. This was a pair of shoes by the brand Labuque, which is a new brand from one of the, the designers of Rag and Bone, I believe. But these, these I had to wait a long time for the right buyer because I originally had it priced at 300 or so, and then they finally sold at $175. So these I found at the thrift store, but I would definitely pay up for these if I found them in consignment. This is an up and coming brand and I would, yeah, I'd pay it for them. I love the style. I love having these kinds of styles in my closet. So yeah. This is the new Tags Maisie Green Button Wrap Skirt by Cezanne. This sold for $135 and I would pick it up again. This piece though, however, took some time to sell. I remember it sitting for a couple months, but I would definitely pay up for it again. 
Oh, I love this piece. This was a C by Chloe navy lace panel peasant blouse that sold for $100. Um, C by Chloe has been around for a while. A lot of the pieces that they put out is very like 70s, fall, autumn, vintage inspired. Um, so, I mean, depending on the piece, I would definitely pay up for them and I would definitely, I would definitely pick them up. Uh, definitely the recent pieces. Reese's pieces. Recent pieces. <laughs> this is my first and only home goods sale that I've made and I don't know why I don't know why I'm not looking into doing more of them because this was an incredible sale this was a pair of restoration hardware alpaca pillow shams that sold for $130 yes I would pick them up again I need to remind myself when I go thrifting that there's not just clothes here, there's value in other sections of the store. So look around. This was a pair of black patent leather boots by Intentionally Blank. These took a really long time to sell and they finally sold for $100. I would pick them up again. I wouldn't pay up for them though. And I would check the comps because they were online for the same. And people are more inclined to buy directly from the manufacturer because they are new and generally you get free shipping. So these are a pair of leather clog boots by Swedish Husbands. These sold for $180. They retailed for like 400 or so. Great comps, paid up for these, would do it again 100%. These are a really, really popular style by Swedish Husbands, very classic. I would definitely pay up for them again. These are a pair of Lucas white denim belted shorts by Cezanne. They sold for $100. Again, there's going to be a lot of Saison pieces in here. I remember paying up for these. I think I paid about 40 or so for the month right up, but I would I would pick up again. Um, this sale took a while, but it was worth it. These are a pair of Dr. Martin's Bentley 2 heart boots, which was a rare style. Um, it was a smaller size, so it took a little bit longer to sell. It's a size five, smaller size, size five. Um, but these sold for $165. I was really happy with that sale and I would definitely pay up for them again. These are a pair of leather booties by Aquatalia. Um, these were a retail arbitrage buy from Nordstrom Rack during their big sale last summer and these sold outright for $170, which is great. Um, would I buy them again? I actually have a second pair for sale in my closet right now, so we'll see how those do but I would buy Aquatali again if it was under like $30 a pair. These are another pair of Swedish has -beens. These are a pair of leather wedge closed toe clogs. These sold for $120. I paid up for them on ThreadUp and I would pay up for them again. Definite, definite uh, Bolo brand for clogs. And uh, they've been popular for years and probably years to come because it's such a beloved shoe brand. So the value remains. This was a new to me brand. This was a leather brand bolo. This is by Muba, M-U-U-B-A-A. And this was a lamb leather moto jacket that retailed for over $500. I found it at my local Buffalo exchange. Um, they priced it really low because they must have thought that it was faux leather because it was so soft because lamb leather is notoriously known for being like buttery soft, like it almost feels fake. So uh, this was underpriced. I sold a, I sold the jacket for $200 and I would definitely buy again and I would pay up for it. This is a dress by Doen. This is the Faye embroidered ruffle maxi long sleeve dress. This sold for $200. I wouldn't pay up for this style. I think that this is a pretty saturated style so I probably wouldn't pay up for it again. I purchased this off of the Real Real and I paid probably 70 or so, 70 or 80 for it. So I probably wouldn't purchase it again because this sale took a really long time. I probably wouldn't pay as much as I did, but if I found this in a buy sell trade store for under $50, I would pick it up. I think pretty much most dresses by Doen sell pretty easily, um, but I know that their shoes don't resell for very much, so. This is a Valentine ruffle blouse by Saison that sold for $130. I would definitely pick this up again. I accidentally had this listed twice and 
it sold for 130 and then a couple days later the original listing of 150 sold outright so but what can you do next piece i was so excited to find but i got really discouraged because it took so long to sell um and this was one of my first men's pieces that i listed this was a supreme black and white daisy floral button down shirt and this finally sold for 120 dollars it took so long to sell though i think that was my fault because i only listed it on poshmark mercari ebay it was my fault but um for Supreme, I probably should have listed this on Depop and Grailed. I feel like it probably would have sold faster on there. I probably wouldn't pay up for this, but I did just pay up for that Supreme bag, so who knows. So this next pair, this is another, another pair of Nisolo. Solo. This is their classic black leather Chelsea boots. These sold outright for $125, and USPS lost them. I feel so bad for the buyer when that happens. It's so disappointing. Um, don't I don't want to wait in line to check things in and get a receipt during COVID. I just feel like it's not safe. And so I just try to drop stuff off in the drop box and get out of there as soon as possible. But uh, this is what happens when, when you do that. USPS um, doesn't check in your item and then it, it just says pending scan and then and then Poshmark has to take care of it. But Poshmark did release the earnings to me and they did refund the buyer. I mean, I hope that the shoes ended up with them at some point, but that was really unfortunate. This, ooh, this is a great buy. This is a Christy Dawn Valeria silk stained glass maxi dress, new with tags, and this sold for $250. Uh, yeah, I want to buy this again for sure. Yes, and actually, I'm making a video right now. Um, so if you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. But I'm making a video right now of um, what I'm sending into ThreadUp for their partner kit with Christy Dawn. Essentially, you just send them a box full of 30 pounds of clothes, and they will give you an outright credit. Um, based on what you sent in for um, online credit to spend on, on christydawn.com. So I'm sending in about 50 to 100 pieces of items that I would just be probably donating anyways. And I'm hoping to get enough credit to buy maybe two or three dresses that I can flip like this. So if you guys are interested in that kind of content, go ahead and subscribe. And that video will be coming out in a couple months because it's going to take a couple months to make. But anyways... Yes, I would buy Christy Dawn again. Love Christy Dawn, still very in demand. I would pay up for it in a second. So this is my highest price sale to date. This was a pair of AGL black leather embellished boots. And boy, did these boots have a story. I've had them all year. I tried selling them myself. I didn't get any action. I sent them into ThreadUp. They didn't sell there. I relisted them when I reclaimed them from ThreadUp and then they sold for $265. Yes, I would definitely buy these again. I would definitely buy the specific style again and I would pay up for them. These are a pair of Rust Wide Leg Trousers by Cezanne. These sold for $115 and I would definitely pick up again. I paid up for these on ThreadUp, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Half of these sales are gonna be Cezanne, just, just you wait. Uh, this was the Emmy Lou Peter Pan collar cardigan by Doen. And this, as you can see in the picture, was worn by Julia of Gal Meets Glam. Um, so that was a that made it a very popular piece. Um, I found this at Crossroads for half off, which is crazy because like this is the brand that like I have at the top of my head when I'm looking at buy sell trade stores. And to find an item by Doen for half off was just insane. It had a teeny tiny little hole in the arm, but I have basic um, mending and sewing skills that I've learned that I think everybody, every reseller should know. I might make a video on that. But um, anyways, I just mended that up and boosted that resale value back up and it sold for $160. Yes, I would buy again for sure. 
So this pair of shoes also had a similar story to the AGL boots. These I had listed for a while, didn't sell, sent them into ThreadUp. Um, they listed them as a sort of brand, so I reclaimed them <laughs> and relisted again, and then they finally sold. These are a pair of Yugo Amanashi Steady Black Leather Boots. These sold for $120. And I wouldn't pay up for these, but I would definitely pick them up again if I found them in the thrift store. This is a new tags dress by Finders Keepers, which is like a Revolve Urban Outfitters anthropology brand. And this was the Songbird floral wrap dress. This sold for $100. Um, this was worn by an Instagram influencer, I believe from The Bachelor, Becca, Becca Tilly from The Bachelor. So I had a picture of her wearing the dress and that brought a lot of interest to the item. So yeah, sold outright for $100. I would pick it up again. Oh, I love this jacket so much. This is a, a suede patchwork 70s inspired jacket by Mango. This sold for $150. Absolutely would pick this up again. Um, this style is so popular right now. The stoned immaculate 1970s vintage style is so, so popular. Um, I would definitely pick this up again and I would pay up for it. So I had known about Galamate Glam for months and months and months. Then I discovered Rachel Parcell also has quite a following with Galamate Glam fans as well. Um, this was a pink midi puff sleeve satin dress that was new with tags. I bought three of them from Nordstrom Rack and I sold all of them for over $100. This one sold for $125 on Poshmark. I would definitely buy again. Um, this is um, a cream woven boxy blouse by Mara Hoffman. This sold for $150, which is great. I did not expect it to sell for that much. So I'm so happy about that sale. And this I would definitely pick up. Mara Hoffman, I would only pick up her recent more clean, basic, solid pieces. Um, she was really well known for like her really busy bohemian prints about 10, 15 years ago. But those pieces don't sell very well. But her newer pieces um, definitely do well. So if you find a newer piece by Mara Hoffman pay up for it pick it up uh, these were a pair of leather booties by the brand what for and these sold for 125 this is a smaller European um, independent brand and I was so happy that these sold these sold for $125 if I found them again in the thrift I would pick them up um, this is a lucky brand black Sherling teddy coat that sold for $100 I paid up for this at the thrift store I probably wouldn't pick it up again um, this took a really long time to sell and I had to relist it a bunch of times, so I probably wouldn't pick it up again. Yes, these were a pair of Schutz Mariana uh, Snake Stiletto Heel Tall Boots. These sold for $250. I found these at Nordstrom Rack. These are a very, very popular style right now. Um, it was definitely a customer return. When you go to Nordstrom Rack, this is what you're looking for, is the popular items that just happened to be a customer return that immediately go to Nordstrom Rack from the main Nordstrom. I would definitely pick these up again. This piece took a really long time to sell. This is by the minimalist garmentory brand, A Piece Apart. This is the Talia Vest Shift Column Dress that sold for $110. It took a really, really long time to sell. Um, and I was hoping to get more for it, but unfortunately it just did not sell for as much as I was hoping. I paid up for it at a buy-sell trade store. Um, I wouldn't pick it up again for the price that I paid for it, but I would if I found it at a thrift store price and if it was a newer a piece apart um, piece. <laughs> um, this piece was quite an older style, but yeah. These are a pair of Paul Green um, black leather peep toe heels. This is their most popular style. This is the Cayenne shoe. And these sold for 135 and I would pick them up again. I wouldn't pay up for them because I think that this was just a really lucky sale. <laughs> um, I've had, I have a lot of other Paul Green shoes that just sit. So I would pick these up again at a thrift store price. So this is the Saison Clements Silky Bronze Midi Dress. This sold for $225, which sounds like a lot, but I paid $140 for it on ThreadUp. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was hoping I could sell for at least $30 or not 30, God. Ugh. I was hoping I could sell for at least $300, but um, that didn't happen. This piece I definitely bought as a closet traffic attractant. This was a really, really popular piece. I actually relisted it a couple times. It had quite a few likes, um, but this brought a lot of traffic to my Poshmark closet. Um, but I did not make much of it. I probably made, I probably made like a 50, 60 or six, a 50 or $60 profit, which sounds like a lot, but when that's like half of like what you paid for it, that isn't a great investment. So, um, these next shoes, these took a really long time to sell and I loved them, but, um, I accepted an offer for 160 on these. I think I had them listed for about 200 or 250, but I was ready to let go of them. These are a pair of copper velvet block heel booties by uh, Rik Nen, Rik Nen. And this is a really popular style. I found these at a buy sell trade store and I loved them. And um, they took a really long time to sell, but I'm happy with the sell price. So uh, yeah, I'd buy again. These are a pair of Dr. Martens. These are the Amelia studded Chelsea boots. These sold for 140. Um, these were a retail arbitrage buy from Nordstrom Rack and I would pick these up again. I wouldn't spend more than like $40 on a pair of Dr. Martens though, depending on the style. These were another Nordstrom Rack retail arbitrage buy. These are Seychelles spotted calf hair offstage booties. Seychelles is sold at Anthropology. Generally when an item is sold at Anthropology, I'll put it under Anthropology. Um, on Poshmark because it's just a greater umbrella. I feel like people are more searching for that than smaller brands that they might not know. Um, so that helped get it some exposure and they sold for $100 and I would pick them up again. Uh, the Babaton Lawson black trench coat, this sold for $150. So you can see this is Meghan Markle wearing the same coat. Um, Meghan Markle is a style icon and um, whatever she wears people buy <laughs> so um so i would definitely pick this piece up again i found this at a buy sell trade store and yes i would pick it up again this was another piece by ackler um this was a new with tags uh ob wrap kimono linen blouse this sold for 100 dollars, and i would definitely pick it up again this is a newer style super beautiful is really aligned with what i want my closet to look like again this modern minimalist style so yeah i would pick this up again definitely and i'd pay up for it this is a really popular saison piece this sold for 140 dollars this is the garant's lace embroidered mock neck blouse and I think I bought this from another Poshmark seller and I would definitely buy this again. This had so much interest in it and um, I'm really happy with the selling price and I would buy it again. Yep. Next up is this pair of a Nine Bing Anya Bootcut Raw Hem High Waist Jeans. These sold for $135. I picked these up at Buffalo Exchange. I paid up for them. I used my store credit and I'm really happy with the selling price and I would definitely buy them again. I hope one day to find an Anine Bing blazer. That is definitely on my bolo list. Um, next is this Everlane Recashmere V-neck sweater in clay. This is new with tags. This sold for $100 and I would buy it again. I think I would definitely pay up for Everlane coats and sweaters as long as they are new or new with tags, but anything else I don't think can garner that much of a profit so if you're paying if you're paying buy sell trade prices not if you're paying thrift prices up next is another piece by Ghani this is a blue silk Cloverdale smocked dress this sold for $160 I was stoked on that price yes 100% I would buy again again only buy newer Ghani do not buy the older anthropology pieces this was also a great buy. This is a blogger favorite, which I didn't know. I found this on ThreadUp and I paid up for it. And I'm so glad I did because this is an example of a piece that sells more, that sells for more than its MSRP. This is the BB Dakota sequin duster kimono and this sold for $175. And this sold 
days after listing. So yes, I would buy that again. Up next uh, is this pair of Rachel Comey Mars booties and whiskey. I paid up for these shoes on ThreadUp. I regretted it because I had these listed for so long. I feel like Rachel Comey's resale value and interest has really gone down. Uh, they were really popular a couple years ago in the garmentory minimalist world. Like they were the leaders of the pack. Like Rachel Comey was it, the Mars booty was it. But I don't even know why. Rachel Comey still makes really cute things. So I'm really disappointed and confused by the resale value. I would pick these up again if I found them at a thrift store or even a buy sell trade store, but I wouldn't pay like $80 again for them. Um, these are a pair of Zara tall snakeskin boots. These sold for $100. These were a great deal. This is another influencer blogger example. Um, these were a very, very popular fashion influencer pair of shoes by Zara. And these sold so, so quickly. Yes, I would buy them again. But this is a pair of number six old school tan suede wedge clogs. These sold for $160 days after listing. Highly recommend, would definitely sell again. Briar and number six clogs do so well. They are stilly, they are stilly. <laughs> they are still highly desired and sought after by buyers. So I would definitely pick up both of those again and I would pay up for them. This is a pair of new with box Jeffrey Campbell dormant snakeskin booties. These sold for $100. Yes, I would pick them up again. Um, these sold on these sold on New Year's Day, so I'm going to include them because I think that it's very relevant because people are buying this. Um, this was a very high sale. This I listed and it sold within two days. These are a pair of Briar Chloe clogs, and these sold for $175 definitely would buy again. These are a pair of Tory Burch Amelia Leather Loafer Mules. These also sold days after listing for $125. I would definitely buy again. Okay, so that's it for Poshmark. Let's move to my second best platform, Mercari. So this was a dress by Cezanne, of course, big surprise. This was a metallic plaid midi dress. This sold for $130 with free shipping. There's a great sale, would buy again, absolutely. This is a pair of shoes by Schutz. Uh, this is the Marley Hirachi Woven Slide Mules. These sold for $130. This was a full price outright sale with free shipping. Um, these I picked up uh, on a retail arbitrage trip to Nordstrom Rack and I would definitely pick them up again. This was another Nordstrom Rack retail arbitrage. This was a pair of Steve Madden Jillian snake boots. These sold for $100 with free shipping. Absolutely would pick them up again. I got a great deal on those and I'm super happy with that return. Um, this is another one of the Rachel Parcel dresses. The one on Poshmark sold for $125. This one sold for $100 on Mercari. Fees are lower, so I accepted a lower price on that. Um, ooh, this is one of my favorite, favorite small independent brands. This is number six, Wear in Good Health. This was a really beautiful basic black linen wrap jumpsuit that sold for $198. Three shipping absolutely would buy again. I paid up for this in a buy sell trade store and it was definitely worth it. Uh, another pair of Dr. Martens. This is the Caitlin 2 Strat Platform Wedge Boot. These sold for $135 with free shipping. Um, I picked these up at a Play-Doh's Closet and I would pick these up again. This is, I believe, a sought after style and I'm super happy with the return on that. So this was great. This was a outright buy of $150 for this new with tags Camila Colo Chloe satin fringe dress from Revolve. Um, this I bought in a bundle from a fashion blogger influencer on Poshmark and I'm super happy with this sale. This sale pays for three quarters of what I paid for the bundle so I'm super super happy with that. Okay and now we're moving into eBay. eBay you know I'm <laughs> I'm done with eBay. I'm not a fan of it. It's it's not very user friendly. It's very complex, uh, and and um, I just don't like it. <laughs> There's just so many things that you have to fill out when you're listing an item. It's just it's just not an attractive platform to sell on. 
you have to wait for buyers to pay you owe them money at the end of the month instead of them just taking the fees as you sell it's just I had a person accidentally buy a $100 item and then I ended up having to refund them eBay never it was just it's just a messy platform that I don't want to deal with again um, so I'm done with them but I did make a couple of good sales before our breakup um, and one of them is this new tags gal gal meets glam Liza print charmeuse midi dress this sold for $150 with free shipping to the buyer and I would definitely pick it up again. This is another Gal Meets Glam dress. This is the Cecily Poplin Floral Dress. This is a size 14, which is a great size, and this sold for $120. Ooh, this is a great sale. This was a Spell on the Gypsy Jasmine Maxi Dress. Um, it was a size extra, extra small, which is a tough size to sell, but this sold for $259, which is crazy. I picked this up at a buy sell trade store for um, five percent of that so if you do the math yes i would pick it up again now as far as thread up goes obviously most resellers aren't selling with them anymore because of their ridiculous um terms of service and um new price out changes so um i'm not selling with them anymore but i did get in there while uh while it, while the iron was hot um, I, I struck while the iron was hot with ThreadUp and I got a lot of really great sales before they decided to do what they did. So all of these items sold for at least $150 to $200. Customers paid that for these items. What I will be saying is my payout is what I'm taking home because I don't have the original um, selling price. But um, these are all items that real customers are paying up for. Um, I know that there's a different customer base for ThreadUp and Poshmark and Mercari, but I feel like this is still good information to have on what brands um, people are willing to pay up for online. So um, up first is this pair of Tory Burch uh, Geo Sequined Espadrilles, and I got a pair of 77.68 for these. I, I actually bought two pairs of these. The other one isn't selling. This is a really oversaturated style, which is why I sent it into ThreadUp because they don't have the style name. So um, it's easier to sell oversaturated styles in ThreadUp. Anyways, um, I would not buy this again. <laughs> Up next is this pair of leather boots by Ugg Australia. I was paid out $77.68 for these. These I picked up at a thrift store for about $10 and I would definitely pick them up again. Um, these were a pair of coach loafers. I received a pair of $106 for these. These I picked up at Nordstrom Rack for $10 and I would definitely pick them up again. This is a J. Crew wool coat. This sold for 120, I'm sorry, this, my payout was $128.64 and I would, I don't know how well J. Crew coats do on Poshmark and Mercari, so I'm not totally sure, but I think I paid about $30 for this at a buy sell trade store. I have a few that I need to list, so we'll see how those do, and then we'll see how those do on Poshmark, and then make an educated decision off of that. Um, up next is this Plenty by Tracy we Reese Wool Coat. This I received a payout of $101.50 for. This I had listed on Poshmark for a while, but um, I, I I sent this in before um, the cold season sent in, so that's probably why it didn't sell. Um, I would pick this up again at a thrift store. This is a new with tags for Love and Lemons dress. I received a payout of $101.03 for it, and this actually sat for a really, really long time in my closet. I would not pay up for this again, but um, if I found it at the thrift store, I would. I would pick it up. This is the item that ended my eBay career. Um, this is, this is, yeah, this is the one. Some guy on eBay bought this, said that he didn't buy it, and then it gave me such grief. I was on the phone trying to cancel the sale, and it was just a mess, and I just, I'm not, I'm done with you, eBay. Um, anyways, I sent this in to ThreadUp, and it sold, and had a really great redemption arc, and I made $96.16 from it. Um, I don't think I'd pick up Prairie Underground again though. It's a very niche brand. 
I would I would pick up newer styles that are new at tags though, and if it was a good price, but. Oh, this was a hot sale. This was a new at tags Rachel Zoe, or Rachel Zoe dress that I got from Marshalls for about $15 and I sent it in and I received a payout of 152 doll hairs. Can you believe it? Crazy. I don't think Rachel Zoe does well or Rachel Zoe does well on other plat does as well on other platforms though. So <sighs> I'm not sure if I pick it up again, but man, that did really well on thread up. Uh, next up is this Cecilia Prado wrap. This was actually a customer return on Poshmark. They said that there was like a small snag, um, which I didn't see. I ended up mending it and I sent it into ThreadUp and it sold for a lot. I got a $96 payout for it and I'm super happy with that and I would pick it up again. Uh, so this is a pair of Paul Green boots. I got a payout. I received a payout of $106 for this. I, I, I don't know. I Paul Green did really well for me on ThreadUp, but I have a harder time selling it on my own platform. So I feel like I probably won't pick it up as much unless it's like really new and really nice. This was a this was a great payout. This is a J Crew dress that I received a payout of $132.35 for. Amazing, amazing, beautiful print dress. Um, I believe I paid like $12 for this at a Goodwill and ha I got an incredible um, turnaround on that. So again, J. Crew did really well on ThreadUp. I'm not sure how it does on the other platforms, but I would definitely pick up this style again. It was such a unique, beautiful dress. Um, this was a dress by Farm Rio for Anthropology. I received a payout of $121.51 for this and um, I don't think I would have made that much on Poshmark. I think that this is an oversaturated style. So I'm so happy to have made that sale on ThreadUp. This is a pair of Jeffrey Campbell's and I received a payout of $97.21 for those. And those were a retail arbitrage buy from Nordstrom Rack. I would definitely pick them up again. And I think that um, probably wouldn't have done any better on any other platform. And then last is this Tibby dress that I picked up at Crossroads. I paid up for it about $30 or so, and I received a payout of $135.07 for this. Absolutely, I would pick this up again, definitely. Um, and I think Tibby does, does pretty well on Poshmark. I have a couple pieces that I'm gonna have to list from them. Um, so that's it. Those were all of the big sales over $100 in 2020. Um, I feel so grateful to have been able to um, start doing this full time and to have made so many sales when last year was truly the most difficult year for everybody. Anyways, I'm really looking forward towards 2021 and have a lot of goals in mind and hope that this information was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you learned a couple of new Bolo brands and a couple of new um, items to keep an eye out for. My resolution for 2021 is to put out quality YouTube content at least three times a month. So if uh, reseller content is what you like to watch on YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe. My plan is to do at least a monthly what sold video at the end of each month and um, monthly hauls and other helpful content. If you guys have any ideas for videos that you want to see me make, just let me know in the comments and I'll get to working on it maybe. Anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Wishing you all a very happy, safe, and a healthy new year and we will see you again next time.